time for politics. I'm speaking to a political analyst and health economist Beatrice Cairo. It's been a while since you were here last and so much has happened. I Actually, I was supposed to have Cyrus and uh, something bad happened to him this morning. I hope he will be well soon. But now, Beatrice, Mumbo. What's that? You got lost. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm sure some people are like, "Can you le analyst and akujanga skuzi ya kuapi?" No, I'm not. It's only that so, the comments are so many, we can't sometimes find others. Wapo katikati, but I'm sure many were looking forward to you coming here again. All right. But mm. that has it. Maybe. Shule zina fungulu aleo. Yeah, finally, finally, somebody with, with, with COVID nineteen <laughs> numbers rising again. Uh, I don't know who is playing who, but surely uh, lazima turudi. I should say, but what is the recovery rate mm -hmm. compared to? It, yeah, it's still at ninety seven percent. We've not the, no no scientist has come to say that it's not eighty mm -hmm. or eighty eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and we saw Donald Trump. Uh, the the potters uh, for the United States of America. He says he's recovering well and he's a 74, uh, 74 year old man. Actually, he has recovered in one week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I, 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 and, 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 and the, the people who are going back to school are young people. Right. And we've seen uh, studies, the short studies that have been done, that the cases of uh, COVID-19 and the young ones, it's not as serious. Uh, and, and if any case, there's any young person who has died from the COVID, had an, an underlying cause. So I think uh, it, we didn't use science to close the schools, mm -hmm. and neither are we using science to open the schools. So mm -hmm. I don't see why somebody should come up to try and correlate right. uh, uh, with the number of cases and COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So since we didn't use science to close schools, and now we are not also using science to open schools, I think let the children go back to school. Mm -hmm. And kids right now are even eager to go back because uh, they are young, active minds. And mm -hmm. these young, active minds must be, uh, must be engaged. So I, I kudos to Magoha. Uh, even I know when the president was opening up the economy, he was mm -hmm. saying the lives of our children are more important than them going to school. But big up to Magoha, who is also a medical doctor, uh, for uh, going ahead mm -hmm. and uh, insisting uh, that they open schools. And I like his strategy. But do you think, do you think mm -hmm. there was a challenge or mm -hmm. there was a contradictory in mm -hmm. how things happen? The mm -hmm. president says uh, the lives of the children matter. Mm -hmm. Then a week later, mm -hmm. uh, shule zinafungulua, then kidogo hazifungulua, then zinafungulua. Mm -hmm. Do you it, think there was confusion? Yes, in terms of uh, administrative and governance, but from an expert point of view, mm -hmm. Magoha did based on his own analysis, mm -hmm. which makes sense. If young people are not getting affected, then I don't see why we are scared. We, we didn't see young people falling down, even, even the one in the universities. Uh, even when you look at various uh, countries, Germany also opened their schools like a month or so ago and other countries even in Africa they've been in an open economy for the last since COVID was reported mm -hmm. so I think Magoha did his own analysis and that's the way we should do we do an analysis we weigh the options and then we go ahead and execute we can't be mark timing and doing a lot of politics and these are the lives of uh, of, of children we are talking about so and I like their their strategy. They decided to use the final years, uh, that is from four, class eight, and and, and stand four, mm -hmm. which will also be good to be able to even plan for the other candidates, mm -hmm. because you see now at least these the form fours are a bit more mature than form ones. The class eight are a bit more mature than the class four, and then the the, the class four are a bit the ten year old. You see, it's a very good uh, study uh, or cohorts. He's taken very good cohorts. So from these cohorts. What I would encourage the education sector to do mm -hmm. is now observe and see. Uh, it's, it's like this, it's a very good sample study, I would say. So from this uh, sample study, now the government can make better plans. Okay. And the schools can also do their needs assessment and see where are they failing, where are they uh, uh, prospering. And then from that, make now more comprehensive and then have a return to school formula for the other 
kids in schools yeah yeah but now i i have seen here in the cities uh the students are going back to school yes from where i've come from I've, i met a number this morning yes but i'm 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 concerned with the persons from the fun flung places like the north uh, eastern uh, kenya uh -huh. and uh, maybe in the villages will those kids go to school <laughs> why not there, are, there have been reports of floods, yes. there have been uh, reports uh, of dilapidated schools, yes, where yes. are they going back to, will there be social distancing, will, yes. it, will, will it be an impartial application of the guidelines by the MOH? Exactly, so that's what I'm saying, uh, first you have to make a decla declaration, like mm -hmm. now kids have to go back to school, mm -hmm. so that's part one, mm -hmm. now part two, now they wait for kids to report. Then they assess why did these people not report to school? What were the challenges? And what can the government do about it? Actually, I was telling uh, one of my colleagues and saying that it's good COVID happened because now it's even exposing big time the education sector mm -hmm. at, a, at another level. Actually, uh, the healthcare sector progression when it comes to COVID-19 mm -hmm. It does not. Uh, uh, it does not actually uh, uh, affect in terms of healthcare sector. Whereby, how will we run our healthcare mm -hmm. sector? But the greatest challenge, the, the greatest sector with the greatest challenge right now mm -hmm. is the education sector. This is where the, not even the return of businesses. That that is easy to do. It not even the return of uh, what is it called agriculture and anything. The greatest headache right now is the education sector not only in kenya but worldwide mm -hmm. this is where now every institution is now trying to crack their heads on how do we ensure that uh, school continues and normal and why do i why do i say that even the universities uh, courses like engineering courses mm -hmm. like nursing courses like medicine some of these courses they are you, for you to uh, qualify you have to do practicals you exactly. cannot do online you cannot just see a video and then you say this one now has graduated to be a, to be a competent mm -hmm. nurse or this one has graduated to be a competent doctor right mm -hmm. so it means the as much as people are now saying we can digitalize classes but there are some courses mm -hmm. you cannot digitalize True. and even the students themselves if it's biology practicals chemi uh, chemistry practicals you cannot mm -hmm. uh, do online and are you, are you sure that the, uh, the kids has understood and ha has understood mm -hmm. now something else we have to understand kids aged between the age of four to around the age of 18 years these 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 are formative years and formative years mm -hmm. you cannot say you'll do only online Remember, beyond school uh, book, there is also character development, uh, social interaction, mm -hmm. which makes a human being. Right. So by the time that child has reached the age of 18 years, now 18 years in, in university, yeah, you can now do online because now it's almost towards now adulthood. But these other ages, you cannot fully uh, say that they'll do online because they're also mm -hmm. developing. And development is not only cognitive, but also in social behavior, which is also learned in school and shaped in school. Right. Because do, do parents have the capacity to do homeschooling Okay, if, if people say now we are going to do online and homeschooling, mm -hmm. do, 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 uh, as a middle income economy, do we even have that ability uh, that. for two parents or one parent to stay at home and, and, and supervise the tutoring of kids at home? Mm -hmm. You see, that's a very great challenge. So right now, I, I think the government right now should be cracking their heads on how education mm -hmm. post-COVID will be. All right. There, yeah. there was also another concern as we finish up on this education. Yes, yes, yes. There was a concern of fee. You remember uh, Tuliambua, this is a year lost. Mm -hmm. And parents, wengine wakakula fee, <laughs> uh, while others were eating yes. fair. So, wazazi walikula fee. There has been a concern. Mm -hmm. And I hear mm -hmm. the government is kind of mm -hmm. uh, trying to come to mm -hmm. solve that problem. Mm -hmm. But what happens to the private sector? Exactly. So... Uh, I, I, as again we have said, part one is first people reporting. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a time Magoha was saying, even if you don't have school fees, first bring your child. Right. The next thing now the schools should do is now do what I insist. And I always insist, let them do a needs assessment. So how many kids reported to school? So how many have school fees? How many don't have school fees? And those who don't have school fees, why? Mm -hmm. Is it because the parent ate the school fees? <laughs> Is it the, because the parent lost a job? Is it because the parent lost a business? 
Yeah, be because these are the challenges. As much as people say jokingly that the parents ate school fees, chances are majority lost their businesses, their daily to day uh, earnings, right? Mm -hmm. Some lost their jobs completely. Some companies closed for good. They're not opening again. So there is a loss of job. And to some extent, mm -hmm. uh, having uh, prior COVID, the unemployment rate was still very high in the country. So we are looking at. Um, People, the, the, the financial strains, not necessarily because parents ate school fees, mm -hmm. but also other factors like job loss, uh, like business losses uh, that affected uh, majority of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So now it's the, upon the government through that needs assessment and the funds that they get, the funds that they have said they have set aside for education. Mm -hmm. They should actually ensure that now they know where to prioritize. Remember now I'm seeing most schools are asking parents to ensure their kids have enough masks. Now, I don't know, maybe a box of, a, a box of um, 50 masks, maybe right now it's going for a thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. Now this parent is not even able to buy uniform because kids have outgrown <laughs> the uniform. Because remember, mm -hmm. people staying indoors, they overfed. So some have increased in gas, and that, 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 that is a fact among us, uh, many Kenyans. They felt they have really gained a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. So uh, it reminds me of seeing a video yeah. by a girl trying to fit in the Exactly, the, the and, and, and that video going around, it, it's, it's trying to state what is happening uh, on the ground. Mm -hmm. So if, if uniform is a problem, shoe size it may increase is also a problem. Now you're also telling uh, the same students to buy masks so that they can report to school. Why can't the government mm -hmm. give masks mm -hmm. to the schools? CAMSA uh, actually, uh, what is it, uh, uh, procured very many uh, masks. Whoa. So what was CAMSA procuring it for? Was it only for hospitals? Mm -hmm. No, these are institutions. So can we s look for a way forward? Because I'm imagining those in the flood areas, I wonder, mm -hmm. where are they getting their masks from? You know, think about Almost it. Likely they may not be and using Exactly. Them. So it's right time the government, because you want to enjoy. I, I saw they came up with a very good report uh, of, of COVID protocols for schools. Mm -hmm. That is one step. But now to achieve that, especially hand washing. Most schools didn't have soap in wash in, when you, for using for washing. Pre-COVID, mm -hmm. the children didn't have soap to wash their hands in most public schools. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm asking myself, will the government also provide soap for these schools? And for how long? And for how long? It's sustainability. Number two, it's hand sanitization points. Are they going to set up in the classrooms? Mm -hmm. So apart from washing hands, do, uh, do we have a sanitizing point at every point? Are you, are you seeing? Then there are workers in the schools. Mm -hmm. So will they be also be going... Uh, back to their homes and then coming back and interacting with the children. This, these are many protocols, they have to think about it. So uh, since camps are over procured mm -hmm. and there's an excess amount of masks uh, mm -hmm. in storage, then also the government should come up with mm -hmm. a way of contributing, mm -hmm. uh, distributing the same mask to the schools. Right. And use that as a case study and see how kids will come back to school. And if if they come, mm. if they come, I, I I don't know. I'm tempted to continue with this education. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's very to. crucial. Education is crucial. If if uh, the 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 grade four and now the candidates have come, to yes. And now we only have said one month. Mm. So we are hoping the next classes they will resume come 2021. Yes. We don't know whether the numbers will have surged or not. Mm -hmm. But if the numbers continue, mm -hmm. do you think? this other group will have lost and is it fair for them class <laughs> no um, w when it, when it comes to learning you can't skip skills you can't mm -hmm. skip uh, teaching you can't it's like saying you you are you are going through medical school and you are told you can skip one practical of how to operate maybe a leg mm -hmm. because then you, you graduate you'll it's, you'll, you'll have half-baked students, mm -hmm. so the, the curriculum must be completed. Now, I have my nephews who are crying <laughs> at the U.S. Jini Mezek, and they, they are 10 years, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, they are afraid uh, to go I back. I say age is just but a number, but um, mm -hmm. I think the resolution, um, the education sector resolved, mm -hmm. 
these were candidates you see it was their final year they they have been trained for like three years if it's the ones in class they have been trained for seven years mm -hmm. the one who are doing the cbc in class four they've been trained for three years so if um they delay a little bit longer you see you'll be unlearning a lot of things mm -hmm. so i think it was prudent and and for me i like the idea of their return to school formula and starting with the candidate that was a very good uh, good strategy i really recommend Mago, uh, professor magoha for doing that mm -hmm. so because they are the ones at the end it makes sense so let them finish complete and mm -hmm. get out of the system uh but now people are saying the ones who finish class a they need to join form one yeah but that's a different story altogether because at least you have your certificate you can wait even that six months or one year but then join form one afresh but you won't go back to do an exam okay. that you know you're taking nine years to have finished right, right. so having said that then therefore what i believe that they are trying to do with these candidates mm -hmm. they'll be able to assess in three months and remember the the incubation period for covid uh, 19 is two weeks right mm -hmm. so if these kids report back to school they'll observe for two weeks what happens are kids getting sick is there a surge they, they will be able to trend and observe and i hope I, I really hope we have good intellectuals uh, in the education sector they, they should not make us flop like they the health experts uh did a very shoddy job mm -hmm. and uh flopped the whole uh, whole system because they were not ready they were not prepared they were not thinking outside the box they mm -hmm. were just copy pasting i hope we have intellectual in the education sector where they can sit down and 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 use the research aspect and observe you see in research there's what you do observation you observe document mm -hmm. and then do your analysis and see two weeks do we have surging do you have kids how are kids behaving what is the behavior of these students they're able to observe that once they're able to do that and document then now we can lay out a plan mm -hmm. do we involve now the second form threes and class sevens and class threes you know you keep on in you know in phases and then eventually you'll have all students back to school mm -hmm. right so i think for magoha having picked the finalists was a good idea actually even the universities some of them that was the final years if, if it's something that could be done online and you and you maybe you had finished with your practicals graduate and get out mm -hmm. right then the ones who uh, and, and i like even what uh, university of nairobi was doing even for uh, for college of health sciences uh, for those units that are actually doing practicals they decided what can be studied online let's give that that which was supposed to be done for practicals let it keep keep it aside right. so anything that is theoretical let the students be learning in the meantime which is good because that saves time mm -hmm. then once we decide in a return to school formula then now we can begin on the practicals but you can't skip you cannot uh, skip at the uh, uhurumia people and they skip uh, some curriculum because you'll have half-baked uh, individuals mm -hmm. and there'll be a ripple effect in the future you, you can imagine having a half-baked engineer or a half-baked doctor mm, okay. it, it's very catastrophic or a half-baked pilot it's very catastrophic so there is no skipping people might rewind at some point yes but it can be carried forward and what and what will happen i think there's a time that time will lap mm -hmm. and it will merge because we know so many people who graduate mm -hmm. uh when they are 23 years old and you get a job five years later right so the kids should not feel that they are growing old mm -hmm. because you can finish school at 19 and you get a job a good job at 30 so uh, so age is just but a number so that should not be uh, a, something that should be worrying the student what should be worrying the student mm -hmm. are they going to get quality education exactly yeah now the ministry of education may have come up with protocols yes. to protect our children from school yes but we have an issue with transportation yes we have our the psvs that are, are floating the guidelines that have been given yes yes the school the Kids will be protected from the school, mm -hmm. but what about the transportation? Should we have another mechanism mm -hmm. for taking these kids to school if you have to use a matatu, especially here in Nairobi? So what, what is happening is right now the protocols read by the government, if you are entering a matatu, you have to have your mask on. You see now the parent has to ensure mm -hmm. the child has a mask on, that's one. Uh, when, they, when they enter the vicinity of the school, it's expected well, by th the this means the child will be boarding the matatu with the parent 
no 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 the, the child bought the ma even you you bought the matatu you, you your mask is on because they're saying mm -hmm. the basic principle at least have a mask on for preventive measures mm -hmm. so the parent at home has to teach their child wear your mask mm -hmm. as you go to school mm -hmm. so definitely wear the light because i'm thinking like a normal kenyan where they'll allow it, they'll enter the gate of the school mm -hmm. so it's expected by the protocols laid out by the ministry of education at the gate there's a hand washing point that that's protocol number one number two mm -hmm. there's someone with a thermometer mm -hmm. at the gate right to take the temperatures of the children mm -hmm. so and, and and i'm adding the education sector even at the classroom doors let them put hand sanitizers so apart from washing their hands, this is so, in mm -hmm. case a child forgot to wash their hands or maybe whoever was inspecting overlooked, mm -hmm. at least by the time they enter the classroom, there's a hand sanitizing point. Right. So already by that, uh, preventive measures have been, you've intercepted the spread of the disease in itself mm -hmm. from a public health uh, point of view. And by the time now they go home, remember, by the time they are now exiting, they're also wearing their masks again. Mm -hmm. By the time they enter their home, mm -hmm. it's now the duty of the parent to insist they wash their hands because the basic principle is the mask washing mm -hmm. of hands. Mm -hmm. There is no other huge uh, protocol uh, beyond that. Mm -hmm. You, you get because definitely in between there will be no social distancing because even we can see even by our own politicians in their own rally there is no social distancing but those basic principles of masks mm -hmm. and hand washing should be ensured mm -hmm. and I'm, 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 I'm grateful that at least this condition is not affecting the young ones Th that, that is what most governments are riding on even in the West, they are riding on that basic fact mm -hmm. that it's not affecting the young ones. Otherwise, it would have been more catastrophic and bigger. But now someone would say the young ones might bring the condition to the parents at home. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are intercepting by washing of hands and sanitizing, then very, very few uh, cases will be experienced. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, what you said, it's quite true to some extent because mm. I know kids are with sometimes, uh, especially our Kenyans, yes. and they especially the use of masks. Yes. If I can get a mask on, I want to a mask, mm. and maybe she may, they may think mm. of dropping the guard. Mm. But anyway, let's uh, finish up. We have about 10 minutes now. Mm. Uh, let's do... Are you are you are you comfortable with the kind of leadership we are seeing in the country so far? Now we're moving into politics. Yes. Are you are you happy how things are happening? You just mentioned of the rallies that have mm, been going mm. on. We have seen people mm. losing their lives. We mm. have seen others being bad from having meetings. Others they yeah. have. Yeah. So there is an impartial of application of the mm -hmm. guidelines. But are you are you comfortable for us having this kind of rallies two years before the elections? <laughs> Uh, it's not supposed to be the case because uh, this is was the high time uh, there would be a lot of reflection mm -hmm. from the government aspect. You see, it exposed the healthcare sector, it exposed the education sector, mm -hmm. it has exposed the finance sector. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's the uh, it's the small businesses that make the economy uh, grow in any country. It's not the big corporations that make uh, the economy grow. It's the small businesses that from an economist's point of view is the small businesses that makes an economy grow because there's exchange of money there's growth mm -hmm. small industries that that is what makes an economy grow uh, to a huge economy mm -hmm. now uh, right now we have seen the small businesses have been crushed they're dead uh, the healthcare system has been bared open right doctors are now striking right and left, left and center mm -hmm. And then now the education sector has been left bare. This was a time the government should be seated, thinking and reflecting where we have been exposed, what we do, and resolve these issues. But now, instead of uh, our leaders sitting down and thinking, because we, I think we lack the leaders who can think. I think we just have people who just make noise, make noise. They're like dogs just barking, barking, barking. They don't sit down and think mm -hmm. and reflect and say, this thing has exposed us. This is the high time, the way KEMSA was exposed in, in, in the tenderpreneur energy. They need to rethink on procurement protocols. How do they curb uh, such kind of, pro, uh, uh, of corruption in, in government institutions when it comes to procuring? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. this, this should have been the time to ask these uh, the questions. The members of parliament, the senators sitting in government, these are the questions we should be really uh, uh, be discussing and looking for a, f a way forward and setting protocols or now to ensure next time mm -hmm. they're not expected. Right now they would be thinking of how do they digitalize learning for the students in this country, mm -hmm. right? This is the high time they should be thinking about that. But they are, all they're thinking about is a BBI uh, to create positions which will not even help Kenyans in any way because it's not bringing development, right? Mm -hmm. Right now they should be asking themselves in those flooded areas, how do those people reach the school? Do we introduce boats? Do we introduce uh, uh, cana uh, canals and, uh, and whatever? Uh, right now, they should be thinking about environmental policies mm -hmm. to inhibit such occurrence in the future because it's affecting small traders, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of them thinking about that, we are thinking of stupid things like prime minister position, deputy prime minister positions, right? And, and I am glad that Kenyans are awake, are, are, are awake. And I hope, I hope, I really hope mm -hmm. that when that report comes out, I am urging all Kenyans, they should sit down critically and read about it. Read. Let them, let them not be lured by their leaders. Because okay. it's apparent we, 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 our leaders don't, don't think. Mm -hmm. They don't think. Now, over the weekend, we had prayers, yes. and uh, at the end of it all, the president was, was not supposed to speak, according to <laughs> the people who were there. Yeah. But when he spoke, yes. I think there's so much we can gather from his statement. Mm -hmm. And he spoke like uh, the late uh, former president, Daniel Moy, yes, when yes. he spoke about forgiveness. Yes. And at the time, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe from the eyes of many yes. and from the political angle mm. saying mm. Uh, I am forgiving everyone yes. and if I have wronged you mm. forgive me. Mm. It has been mm. a heated time with him and the deputy president. Yes. Now do you think there was a political meaning to the, those particular statements? For me how I perceive it, uh, I'll speak on my own opinion. Um, I think the president can start, uh, has started feeling the temperatures. Mm -hmm. He's seeing how the citizens are. You remember, I'll take you back in the year 2013, uh, when now Kibaki was about to finish his term, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's every leader. You see, like Moy in, in 2002, he, it's every leader's uh, wish that he leaves someone uh, who can carry on either his legacy or his assure, he assures himself that the presidency, uh, the citizens have been left in good hands. Mm -hmm. Wh which is a good thing about a leader because as a leader you should mentor somebody whom you can leave your legacy. Mm -hmm. You see I wish Wangari Mathai had le left her legacy to Ayanga Wangari Mathai in this country to carry on the legacy on, 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 on uh, activism in terms of environment and everything. Because once a leader dies, they die with their legacy. That's a problem in Africa when a leader dies they die with their legacy mm -hmm. and, that, and, and never to be heard of. But when you look at uh, developed societies, it, it's, 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 it has been uh, ingrained in them when you're a leader, you try and spruce up somebody else who will in turn mm -hmm. carry on your legacy. So even when you die, there's another Martin Luther King Jr. continuing the legacy. But we find it uh, in, in our African setting, it's, 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 it's killed. It's, it's usually killed many times. Eh? Mm -hmm. there, there's no continuity so you find another leader coming in they have to start again afresh instead mm -hmm. of a continuity mm -hmm. so president kibaki in the year 2013 uh, when he was now leaving uh, government around 2012 he he felt that he needs to leave the the, the country in the hands of of of, of uh, an, an able leader mm -hmm. and he was easily inclined towards musali amudabadi that that was one of the greatest choices of um, Mwaikibaki. But people warned him and told him, no, 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 no. Allow the citizens to choose whoever they want. Mm -hmm. Don't mendle it into it. Finish your legacy. Go home. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see during that time, there was no much tension with Kibaki. Everybody was just allowing him to, to just mm -hmm. finish up. And nobody bothered so much. But now when you look at Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy, now there is that... You, you remember politics is about perception. Mm -hmm. So there is now in, an insinuated perception that there is a way that 
uh, who wants to continue in leadership even after he has left the presidency. Mm -hmm. Now that what has happened, it has agitated uh, the populace because remember right now his rating and his, and, and his favor uh, with the Kenyan uh, populace mm -hmm. is, has really gone way, 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 way down and even COVID in itself has really exposed so many things in that government. Mm -hmm. So now I think Uhuru during that interfaith prayers um, which sometimes I really wonder why we mix politics and religion. But anyway, wherever politics is, religion follows closely. We can look mm -hmm. at Islamic states. They have to, for any strong society, there must be a strong belief. There must be a strong religious belief. Somebody may say China has no Christianity, but China have a belief system. That culture of there, whether they, whether they worship a dragon or they worship a snake, they have a belief system. Mm -hmm. The same thing in the West. Every community, any stable community has to have a a belief system or a deity they pray to mm -hmm. that that is key that 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 is undisputable i don't see any 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 state or any country that is stable without a belief system. even those who are atheists it's still a belief system if you it's Scientology, you believe in science oh, that's right. still a belief system so having gone to that interfaith he, he has sensed the the pressure and remember prior to that interfaith prayer mm -hmm. there was a suckers in moranga you see, no, it, it, those are political temperatures brewing up. And remember, you don't want to live as a leader mm -hmm. and deaths are on your neck. Mm -hmm. You know, people saying, you, you made so many people die because of you. Because remember, even the 2007 political violence, there are people who still blame Kibaki because of it, right? Yeah. So Uhuru is also trying to ensure that he doesn't get that maki into it. Mm -hmm. So I think, I hope he's soon realizing that he just needs to finish his term as a president, uh, try in the next uh, two years to do as much as possible. Not, now it's not even two years, almost like a year, because mm -hmm. most likely 2022 elections will be around April or the August. So he should try in the next one year at least to do something for the citizens and okay. try and, and, what is it called, clean up his legacy a little bit. So that come the year 2022, he lives in peace. Because this country is does not belong to individuals. Right. You are alive today, tomorrow you are dead. Mm. So the best thing you can put is better policy, better institutions that can out leave you in years and years to come yes. all right thank you so much apparently we are out of time but at least we have tried to demystify yes. some of the things that uh, maybe are difficult to understand especially in politics mm. thank you so much for being part of us i'll be coming up again after this short break with a discussion on career choices you know you're at a point where you're like where do i go next from here what is the best thing that i can do how do i realize myself that interview is coming up in a bit. She has been my guest, Beatrice Cairo, political analyst and health economist. And my name is Dereva Hilary. Have you yourself a very good morning, even as you wait to come back with another discussion. Keep it up. Good morning.